What's up, guys? It's Coach Grant with First Down Training, and today we're going to be breaking down how quarterbacks can avoid arm and shoulder pain. So we're going to be talking about some of the mechanical aspects of the position that's going to take less pressure off your arm, your shoulder, your elbow when you guys are making this throw so you guys can throw for longer periods of time and obviously have less pain in your arm when you throw. So I hope this helps you guys out. I hope it shares some insight on throwing mechanics and what you guys can do with your motion to take care of your arm specifically, okay? But also, fellas, we are going to be coming to nine different states this year. We just now released all nine locations that we're going to be coming to for our quarterback, wide receiver, and DB training camp. So we're going to be coming to Florida. We're going to be coming to Phoenix, Arizona, Houston, Texas, New Jersey, and the Newark area. We're going to be coming to Atlanta, Georgia, Chicago, Illinois. We're also going to be coming to Dallas, Texas. We're going back to Texas, then Tennessee, um, Nashville, Tennessee, and then we're coming back to Los Angeles, California. So check out that very first link below. If you guys are located close to any one of those locations want to come out, we have limited spots for each two-day camp. It's going to be eight hours of work for you guys, quarterbacks, receivers, DBs. So check out that very first link below. If you guys are local to those areas and want to come out and get some get better, get some great working with myself and a few other coaches that I will be bringing out. So let's get started with this video. So first thing I want to talk about here is where your back leg is located in your motion. So we're going to be looking at two different clips here. So this first clip from Derek Carr, this is a good example of how you guys can get more of your hips and more of your legs involved in the throw to take pressure off your arm. Then the second example is going to be a bad example of a quarterback who plays at the collegiate level, who um, has a very, very wide base that puts a lot of stress on his arm. Okay, so we're going to take a look at both. So with Derek Carr here, one thing I want to point out is that this back leg is underneath his frame. Everybody knows if you, if you, especially if you follow this channel, we talk a lot about hip rotation, external rotation, weight transfer, right? Those are the things that take stress off your arm. You don't throw a football with your arm. It's like baseball, right? Just like you don't swing the bats like separate from your whole body. It's you get your weight transfer into it. You're driving off that back quad. Your back leg is pivoting, right? So it's like you get your hips engaged so you don't have to, it, it gives you torque, it gives you more power. But when you're throwing a football, it takes that stress off of your arm, right? So it starts with where your foot is located because so many quarterbacks have this base super wide. Like if this was a person here, their feet would be super wide outside of their frame and their back leg would trail way behind their shoulders in the motion, right? So you see when Carr makes this throw, he's got that back leg under his frame because he knows when he transfers his weight to the front foot, that's going to allow his hips to open up. That's going to allow his front hip to open up because he's able to drive that back knee through the throw because his back leg's in a good position. So many quarterbacks have that back foot super wide back here and when they go to throw their back leg doesn't go through like the knee doesn't drive through their back leg drives backwards right and so what ends up happening is that your shoulders will beat your hips on the throw okay the sequence of every single throw this is something that we like to talk about is that your front foot wants to get down and that comes from what that comes from weight transfer right so you're transferring that weight from your back quad getting the front foot down and then your hips will come through and then the shoulders come through and then the football comes through now what a lot of people like to do who have that bad back leg is that they will have the shoulders lead the hips. The shoulders will come through and the hips will trail way behind. Now, the problem with that is that puts so much stress on your arm and that's what leads to arm and shoulder pain right? So the arm and shoulder pain comes from you not engaging your lower half in the throw. Now, some people might just be overworked, right? Usually when you have that pain, like kind of in your forearm area, upper half of the arm, like upper half of the forearm, I mean, excuse me, that's usually just from being overworked. And that's going to be cured with ice rest, you know, stretch it out, maybe get a massage gun, a foam roll, whatever it is. But when you guys have that pain in your shoulder, that elbow, that grueling pain, usually that comes from not engaging your lower half in the throw. So we have to make sure that my back foot is in a good position to where my knee can drive through to where my hips can rotate through and not coil out with the front hip. Anytime that you see a quarterback who likes to lean out of the throw or swings that back leg up in the air, usually that means that they don't have that good external rotation. Because as a quarterback, we're a rotational athlete, right? I'm either going to rotate at my hips or I'm going to rotate at my shoulders. And rotating at the hips because of the weight transfer of my back leg and where my back foot is located underneath my frame like this, that's what's going to allow me to get more pop on the ball, number one. But it takes that stress off of my arm. You look at any NFL quarterback, they're all able to do this. They're, they don't, they're not able to throw with the schedule that they have, hundreds and hundreds of throws every single day without being able to engage their lower half, their hips, their core, without putting a ton of stress on the shoulder and the elbow. Obviously, taking care of your arm afterwards, making sure you have a proper warm-up is essential, but mechanically, that's what we need. We need this back leg to be underneath my frame, so when I do decide to transfer my weight, my hips lead the throw. My front hip is able to open up. When your front hip opens up, that has the ball trailing the hips. That gives you more power. You see how car doesn't even necessarily have to bring the front foot over. It's all about 
about weight shift. When you can get weight to the front foot, that's what allows your hips to rotate through and you don't need to lean. You don't need to put a ton of emphasis on this throw with your upper half. Let's watch this thing one more time and then we'll get to that example where the quarterback's base is a little bit too wide where you guys will kind of swing out, okay? So now we see how this quarterback, this, this guy has a little bit of a wider base. You see how it's kind of a, a weaker throw over the middle, I would say, right? Not to bag on this guy, obviously, because a lot of people have this problem, but you see where his back leg is, right? So his back leg is outside of his shoulders rather than where it should be, which is like a little bit underneath so he could absorb a little bit more weight. This back leg is like an anchor, but also this back leg allows you to shift that weight forward, right? When you're super wide with this, what's going to end up happening is you're going to end up pushing, right? You don't want to push off of the foot. You want to drive off of the quad because that weight shift will naturally get the front foot down, but also that will get your hips more engaged. So now because the back foot is wide, you see when he goes to throw, how it kind of trails behind. We don't want to get to this position because that position right there, you see how his knee isn't driving through, it's driving back. So what ends up happening here on this throw is that his shoulders end up leading the back hip. And guess what happens? That back leg swings out of the grasp, just like I was talking about, because we don't have that external rotation from my hips. You look at his front hip, it doesn't come open like Derek Carr's does. It kind of locks out. And you see how it like coils inward? When your hip coils inward like that, that means that we aren't rotating. We are pushing off the back foot, but we are also leaving the back foot behind. So the shoulders end up beating the hips. And when we get to that position where my elbow is before my hip and my my leg is trailing way behind. That puts so much pressure on your elbow, on your shoulder, on your arm, because you are throwing this thing mainly with your arm. You don't have any torque. You don't have any external rotation from your hips. So we have to make sure as quarterbacks, fellas, that we get that back leg into a good position. If you're a guy who loves this wide base, scoot your back foot down. Trust me, it might feel uncomfortable, but it's going to feel like you have a lot more weight on that back leg. And the goal is to shift the weight. If you could shift the weight through and able to actually drive that knee through and get the hips to open up and go through before the ball, that's it's going to give you much more pop, much more torque on the ball, and much more power, but also take stress off of the elbow. We just don't want to let the shoulders lead the hips. We don't want the back foot to swing behind because when we swing up like that and that leg's locking out, it's this is such a this is an upper body throw, right? We want it to be a lower body throw. We want it to be a hip rotation throw. We want it to be a weight transfer throw. So many quarterbacks struggle with this too. Like that's that's not the, oh, this guy's only problem. It's not like he's the only one that has this deal. So many young quarterbacks are too wide. They have too much weight on their front foot. It's about having that back foot just underneath your shoulders so when you transfer that weight your hips can rotate your front hip can open up and that gives you more pop on that ball let's watch thing again full speed one more time this is just that example of what you don't want to do having too wide of a base to where this is mainly an upper body throw so i want to include this clipper from carson wentz because he does have a naturally wider base however the back leg is still in a good position and that's what i want to highlight here i just want to point this out one time through so now when he's coming through on this throw you see how he's at the top of this drop he's got a lot of weight on the front foot and his back leg is super wide back here, right? I know the clip kind of cuts off, but his back foot is super wide. Now, the issue with this throw here, or not the issue, but the issue that a lot of quarterbacks have is when they get to this spot, they never get their weight to the back leg. They never readdress with that back leg under your frame. But you see when Wentz hitches up, his weight goes from front leg to the back leg, right on the hitch, front leg to the back leg. And look where his back leg is located. It's just underneath that shoulder, right? And that's a good position where he could have weight back here. He could drive this knee through like so. And you see how the last quarterback we had, this knee never turned through. You know what I mean? It never like, it never turned through. He just left it like this and his shoulders ended up beating his hips. But because Wentz had that back leg in a good position, he was able to get that front hip to open up. And guess what? His hip his back hip is coming through before the football that's right here. That's what we want to try to get to. That's about as wide of a base as I'll let you guys have, or I want you guys to have, at least I should say. But make sure that that back foot is just underneath that shoulder. You can absorb some weight on that back leg, like about 70%. And when you shift that weight through, it gets the knee through, it gets the front hip to open up, which are both tied together, and it comes through before the football. That takes all the pressure off of your elbow. That takes all the pressure off of your shoulder when you can get your hips more engaged with the throw and let your lower half make the throw. When you hear people say, oh, you got to throw more with your legs, that's what we mean. We mean transfer the weight, we mean letting my hips rotate so I don't have to put so much stress on my arm by having my shoulders beat my hips. Let's watch this thing again full speed one more time. I hope this helped you guys out. I know this is something that a lot of people ask about is that arm pain. So I hope it gave you some value. I hope it taught you some things just about what you could do mechanically to preserve your arm and keep your arm in a healthy position. Okay. All right, guys, we want to thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, like I always say, please don't hesitate to leave those in the comment section below. We'll get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Again, fellas, if you're in one of those nine states, Florida, 
Florida, Arizona, Texas, and the Houston or Dallas area. Coming to Tennessee, coming to Georgia, Newark, New Jersey, and then Los Angeles, California. If you guys want to come out to one of those camps in one of those cities, check out that very first link in the description below. Limited spots, only 50 per each one, and we're going to have about five coaches there. So a lot of a lot of attention will be paid to you guys. A lot of one-on-one -on -one instruction. So check out that very first link below if you want to get access to the information that we're going to be covering in those camps. I'll see you guys next time.